visited in the night when you were sleeping. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. You, you, you would find that out. But it was, it was weird because when I looked at where I was going, it, I was going through buildings or I must have been flying over them. <laughs> you know, the way the, the path showed it, I wasn't on the street. What was yes. happening in your dream? That's what we want to know. <laughs> I, have a, I have a friend who's into this stuff and she and she just said, uh, were you dreaming that you were flying? I said, no, I, I didn't have any dreams at all. I just woke up and saw my watch and then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. This has you nothing to do with photography, Don. Nothing you, to you do with dreaming that you were flying. You were actually flying. This is the thing because my GPS, my watch, has a map on it, and I was not in my house. This is this is wow. it. This reminds me <laughs> yes. of that show that used to be on all night long, the Art Bell Show. Um, you know. Stick with us. Coming up, Bob the Trucker is going to talk about his close encounter with a Kubiachi, <laughs> Corny Kubi, or Kubi, whatever those things are. Bigfoot. Does it really exist? Let's hear from you right after this commercial break. <clears throat> hey, you, you've got a second, you've got a third career here, Don. <laughs> I know, I was thinking I could do um, uh, conspiracy theories about, you know, weird stuff. <laughs> like, Sid Caesar, is the beard <laughs> real? Let's hear from you, dial in 888-555, we're here all night. <laughs> No, no chubacabri is going to be coming on this one <laughs> i'm so tempted to give you my best trucker radio convoy talk <laughs> <laughs> how you doing right. Sid? break a one nine break a one nine it's, it's the rubber duck <laughs> it's rubber duck that's right rubber ducky <laughs> I, I unfortunately have many years behind a cb did you ever play cb tag when you were a kid i was a driver i drove oh, right. We used to do that a lot when I was in high school, CB tag. We had a bunch yep. of people that would do it. Awesome. I was a yellow roller skate. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Did you drive a little VW? Uh, no, I had a, um, a Honda. Oh, did you? A little, a little Honda Civic yellow. A pregnant roller skate is what they used to call a little VW yeah. bugs. Or yeah. bugs. Just bugs. bugs. I used it was to great. Them, My, I drove a big pickup truck. I called them roadkill. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> Speed bumps. Well, before we start, I want to share with you a story about a gentleman from, of course, Florida. Um, <laughs> he was on a, a spiritual journey last night when he, now spiritual journeys are mean different things to all of us. I mean, who among us hasn't gone on a spiritual journey? <clears throat> but his included stealing a deputy's cruiser and credit card and then um, wrecking the cruiser and spending a bunch of money on the credit card while the other deputies were trying to find him. So there we go. And here is a nude Florida woman caught. Um, um, well, we're not even going to go there. But she was <laughs> doing it in front of a chicken store. No, no. I think if you think about it, it has all kinds of metaphorical illusions. Sophie's going, project. No. <laughs> well, everybody What's doing that well? for a reputation. What there reputation am I getting? Well, this is um, um, this young this uh, young lady or middle aged lady or whatever. This is her third time being caught doing uh, what that that whatever that was. They're in front of the chicken place. So there's got to be a whole lot of something wrong there. Uh, <laughs> Sid, you doing okay out there? You I am hanging snow, in here. Snow and everything yet? Uh, it's pouring rain right now. We had a beautiful like four or five days where it was about 72 degrees. We had uh, the, the, the Thanksgiving summer here. Um, but it's starting to get a little bit colder now. I think that was the last of the warm weather. And... Now we're just going to have to hunker down for the next five months. How long is your winter? Uh, usually it starts sometime towards the end of Thanksgiving. Um, 
end of November. And then usually it lingers until about March sometime. And then sometimes we have fairly safe winters. And then other times we just get completely hammered. So it's, it's always up in the air about like, what's it going to be like this year? Like what's the farmer's almanac going to say? And so I don't know. My wife thinks it's going to be a very chill winter and there's not going to be a lot of snow, but um, I don't know. Not just um, yeah, it's um, uh, we're getting a, the West Coast is getting a big one right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're getting brutally cold temperatures. The snow level will fall two thousand feet in Washington and Oregon. Uh, that's low. That's mm -hmm. uh, you know, right down in the foothills kind of thing. But Arizona just keeps you know going on doing its thing. <laughs> Good. I'm in the, in the midst of uh, redoing my office. I had to clear all the boxes that were stacked back there out of the way so they wouldn't be in the view. So mm -hmm. uh, all manual. It's a manual labor Friday, except for my little respite here, talking to you guys about photography. Lots of good stuff in those boxes. Um, I had to come to terms with throwing away books. But I also came to terms with I wasn't going to throw away any photography books. Mm -hmm. So I've made place for my photography books. But then I, I do have, a you know, I have books like How to Build a Digital Online Business from, <laughs> from 2002. And I'm thinking, you know, this probably isn't relative to today. There's a very time specific museum. There, you there can is there's a window and then there's like not a window and. So I have a bunch of that stuff and that's just going to go to the Goodwill. I'll let them, yep. they can sort it out over there. And maybe somebody's writing a book and they need historical whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you guys have uh, free little libraries out there? Um, I, th I think we do downtown. Yeah. I think we do downtown, but um, not, not out here in the burbs. I mean, no. we're just, everybody's in their car here. There's no, we don't have a central like square. A lot of towns I've noticed in the mid in the in the Atlantic states, you know, that downtown would be like a, a public square, you yep. know, yep. or park and stuff. We don't we have nothing like that here. It's you know, yep. drive through chicken places. <laughs> um, how and how how are you doing, James? I see James is here from Florida. How are you I'm doing? Good. I'm good. It's been a busy week. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Eleanor is here. Catherine Dunlap, Lauren, Stephanie, Nina, James, Mark, Sophie, Mike, eh, Sid, and Carmen. Wow. So yeah. So Carmen and uh, Sophie over there in in uh, France. Uh, Sophie, what is that hanging up behind you? Not the not the Buddha, but the the black and whites. What are those? It's my. It's a poster with photos from India that I made. I can get it a bit closer, but haven't you seen it, guys, before? I, I don't recall. I've I've seen some of the photographs. I don't recall mm. seeing the poster. But then I don't recall a lot of stuff, Sophie. <laughs> getting a little glare. There you go. You're getting a little glare on it. Oh, okay. Very cool. So it's just to try. Now is that what did you is that a big black and white print? Is that what that is? Yeah, and it's a multiple. It's not great quality, but it was super cheap. It was like seven euros. Oh, it's like a, we have them here. They're called what are they called? Said so you've got a couple engineer um, prints. Engineer prints. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it, no, it's on regular photo paper. It's on it, regular photo oh, paper, but oh. there was a, a seventy percent off. Well, so can't be I bad. just thought I'd yeah, try. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And it's been hanging like that since. <laughs> so. I don't remember seeing it, but okay. But memory is memory is something that I have tenuous relationship with these days, which I have found uh said you're gonna like this. There's a good side to getting old and forgetting shit. Okay. okay. I have seen all of the NCIS videos or stories multiple twice times before in my life yeah my wife and i are going through them the third time and it's all like brand new i'm like oh that's really cool yeah. so i'm thinking <laughs> i mean there's like 18 seasons of this thing right i'm thinking all i have to do 
I don't need anything else except the box set mm -hmm. of NCIS and the rest of my life is taken care of. I can just yep. sit there and get to the end and start it again. It'll all be yep. new again, be fresh, yep. exciting. And I can be like that with Law and Order SVU. Like my wife will come in and she'll be like, didn't you already watch this one? And I'm just like, like four times and I got to watch it again. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Well, I, I can't watch the new stuff, so. Uh, and at the amount of time that I have to watch TV, uh, this this round of NCIS should last through 2021. Um, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> anyway, who wants to share something today? Sid, what you got? No, you had said something about talking about sort of crazy, crazy clients in the past or crazy clients, weird... crazy situations. Yeah, like and, the most. Uh, um, I've had I've had a few. I'm absolutely certain you've had a few. Um, just, just James a few. James is smiling already. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I've had a few. <laughs> um, so uh, you want to you want to start it off, Sid? I well, uh, let's let James go because I want to hear. All right, James. So, yeah, he's he's smiling too big. This has yes. got to be good. So <laughs> names have been changed to protect the you know the safety of the client and everything. No, what's but... that, what is said in this group stays in this group. <laughs> no, I'm recording it. But... Uh, no, I mean, it just we had a, a rather high maintenance client this week who uh, waited until 11 o'clock in the morning to, to change the time of the shoot from 3 to 4.30, which for a normal headshot client would be fine. You're in and out in an hour and it's not a big deal. Unfortunately, the, the studio I'm shooting out of, another photographer had a shoot booked for 6.30. And uh, I brought in a makeup artist I've worked with for, for about 10 years now. And she did a fantastic job. She sat the girl down in front of the mirror so that she could see what was going on and did her hair and makeup in just under an hour, at which point the girl announced that she hadn't really been paying attention and she doesn't like her eyes and she doesn't like her cheeks and she doesn't really like her hair very much. And she'd like to change it to something completely different. Well, of course she did. <laughs> so, uh, so Rachel was great. She's like, sure, knock yourself out. You know, use my stuff, use your stuff, whatever. And uh, we were kind of joking afterward, and she says, "That's why I love these kinds of shoots because I don't really give a shit what she looks like at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she's happy, you can put purple eyeshadow on. I don't care." Uh, but anyway, it, it was frustrating for me because we had eaten up all the time we had getting the makeup ready to shoot, and then I had about twelve minutes to get the headshots. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, uh, it's like it's, you're prime you're getting prime for celebrity shooting that's pretty much how it works there right yeah <laughs> you know remember um the the guy who does his blog is called damn ugly photography yeah and he got to he got to shoot celine dion right and they get they told him it had 30 minutes to shoot celine dion he ended up having four but he had two sets already set up so he's mm -hmm. just like banging through this one and banging but but he also then he said but the cool thing was i don't know it's four eight minutes whatever the cool thing was she's such a pro that you know it's like stand over there and do this and she's just do 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 and they're perfect you know it's like yeah that's uh, that's what happens uh, when you're working with the real pros yeah absolutely yeah i had, I had heard a story one time guy that had to shoot uh w uh george bush jr and I think he had like 12 seconds to get it done <laughs> mm -hmm. because the president has such a busy schedule. Every minute is accounted for. And it's like, after he gets done this speech and before he leaves the room, you got to get the shot. <laughs> yeah. And he has these like highly armed people who are there to make sure that he stays on schedule and you don't screw it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 That was a, uh, I don't remember who that was. It might have even been Coupon, but uh, but it was a really fascinating read. It was about three paragraphs. That's about a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coupon's it. coupon's shot of uh, of W is really good. A great shot. Um, Sid, I've got two. 
that I want to share. One's a, a, a cluster uh, and the other one is just something that, that happened that was funny, but Sid, so, uh, share one. Um, I had, so most of them are like little tiny weird ones. I had a uh, person, I'm not going to, who came a musician and they wanted to do a in-studio session and everything. And I noticed that while we were talking, he had on his, on his earlobe, he had tattooed a yin yang design. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And he was into music in the seventies and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the day of the shoot and he comes in the studio and he's talking to me and he's, he's constantly keeping his head at an angle like this. So I can't see the side where the tattoo was and we're talking and he, he, you know, like as he's talking to me, you know, he's making sure he's not turning his head. And then finally he turns his head and where the tattoo was, was this giant purple thing. I don't even know what happened. So I was just like, what, what, there's some, something going on with your ear. What's going on? And he was like, last night I decided I didn't want this tattoo anymore. And so I've been doing an acid wash so that I could burn the tattoo off. So he was <laughs> dipping his earlobe in acid and decided he was going to do it the night before the photo shoot. So he had this, it was terrible. It, it looked terrible. It looked like somebody tried to chop the bottom of his earlobe off. And he was just like, man, you know, I just decided I didn't want it anymore. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, we're just, we're going to keep your face in one direction. And I do not want to, ugh, it was just, that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. Well, I was kind of like, seriously said, who among us has never decided to stick our face in acid? Right. I mean, right. I, I, mean, I, had a, I had another client, same thing. Uh, the night before the shoot, it, it was a female and she had really nice long hair. The night before the shoot, she, I think she just had a freak out. Like, I don't know what happened. And she cut all her hair off and she came in the next day and she, in like, she had already sabotaged her own shoot because she like her hair was just a mess. And then something was going on with her clothes where I don't know. I don't know. I think she just had, again, it was just like this self sabotaging thing where she just mentally wasn't ready yet. And rather than cancel or delay, she just like turned all this aggression on herself. And so that was really awkward too. Cause it was just like, you know, like what, what, what just happened? Like, don't cut your hair the night before a shoot and don't do it just completely like spontaneously. Like, oh, I don't like this anymore. I'm going to chop it all off. Mm, no. We, uh, uh, this was one of the biggest jobs I think I may have ever in, encountered. Um, but we were shooting the new uniforms for Singapore air, which was very rare for, uh, American agencies and, uh, Singapore were usually six with Singapore, but our the Mer the American agency had a, a a shop in Singapore, and they had it here, and they decided to shoot here, and we had to build three sets in the studio, big, you know, where the like, uh, you know, when the stewardesses go back to get sodas, they got that little refrigerator and the little yep. steak. So we had one of the, they sent us one of those that was built in. So we had three sets for these things to shoot these new uniforms. We spent a week casting because we had to get just the right girl, just the right, there was one guy and, and two women. And um, they, and all of Singapore Airlines stewardesses at the time had to have hair beyond their shoulders, black hair beyond their shoulders. It, it, it looked like a Peter Gabriel video. I mean, they all <laughs> looked the same. It was amazing. Yeah. So we're talking at least five weeks of pre-production. Everything's set up. Two of, the, two of the models are coming from LA. We found a guy in Dallas. He's flying in. Two days of shooting. Sets all set up. The clients get off the airplane, get in the cab. And when they get out of the cab, they're they're arguing, you know, nah, 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 nah. I can't understand what they're saying. Nobody can understand what they're saying, except the interpreter who we had hired, who started going white. You see, on the flight over, they decided they wanted to change things. Oh. A lot. And I'm, I'm going, what do you mean they don't want two girls? No, uh, they want wanted three girls now. Um, and we're, we were to send the guy home. We wow. just flew him in from Dallas, you know, put him up for the night. Now we're going to go home. Plus, it took us two weeks to find the two girls. That, and they're like, yeah, but that doesn't matter. Just get it done. Just get it done. And my, the art director that I was working with, a young man, uh, under 30, he was 
literally, he was so close to being, you know, where, where people go rigid and just stare into space, when it was <laughs> catatonic, whatever. He was, he was like throwing up the whole bit. And I just put my foot down. I just put my foot down and I said, no, we can do that next time. Yep. But this is what you've spent five weeks and thousands of dollars to prepare for. We can change it up and shoot it later. And they agreed and we moved on with the shoot and they never did shoot it later. Yeah. They never did. Um, but uh, and now that's not a terribly funny story. Uh, but for those of us who lived through that day, it's funny as hell. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I can remember I mean, the looks on faces and the, you know, when I said no, that's when the art director started to go back, like the eyes were rolling. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the copywriter was there. There was like three three um, what do you call them? Uh, I used to run an ad agency. Account execs, three account execs yeah. there, and they're all like, I just said no. We're, we're not even going to try. We're not even going to play with yeah. the idea of changing yeah. Yeah. what we've done here. You can't. Yeah, when it's a production like that, you you, no. you can't. Too many people have signed off on it, and too there's too many expectations of yeah. It's I don't. It's it's weird because it's like it always. Anytime I have a larger corporate job, I mean, you can bet. Like I can bet the morning I get up, it's like okay, we're going to get to the location early, and somebody's going to want to change something. And sure enough, it's and usually it's somebody that isn't involved really with the process at all. It's just someone that like happens to stick their head in the door as you're walking by and they're like, Oh, could we do this? And it's like, no, no, it's a great idea, but no, we can't do that right now. Cause you know, we've got everything locked in. And that's the corporate, like the corporate attorney's wife looked at the mock-ups and decided that that color purple reminded her of her aunt peg. And she really hated Aunt. Peg. Yes. So we have yes. to change the color of purple. Now it's a pretty good bet that nobody else on the planet knows Aunt Peg. No. But they'll they'll still entertain doing it. They'll still like, oh, what can we do? It's like, I've learned to say no. Yes, no. you have to. I had a job a few years ago and it was for a Boston company. And this was with a design company. So they were they were using me. They, you know, threw my name out to this company and they were like, okay, let's go with him. So the design company was in charge of locking everything down. So shortly after we got everything locked in, I started getting these really weird phone calls from someone and they were like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of work with this company. Um, and we've done like, we've done photo shoots in this company before and they've shared the pictures with me and I use them on my website and stuff. And this person was being very, they weren't saying who they were and they were avoiding any kind of question about like, well, how are you affiliated with this company? They, they, they were just like, oh no, I work with them sometimes. And I'm like, I, you know, like everything you're asking for, that's, that is, that's a creative decision that has to be approved by the design company because they've got their idea. This, this is their client. And I'm like, if you, you know, you want to interact with them, you have to call the design company. You can't come to me because I'm just, I'm shooting the stuff that they want me to shoot. They're going to, we're going to have a shoot loose. And th over the course of like a month and a half, every once in a while they would call and they would just be like, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, everything was okay. And that, you know, you could share the images with me. And I'm like, you're, you're you, like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, but you have to talk to the design company. Sure. You, they've got to clear it with them. You, you, you're not, you're talking to the wrong person. So it turns out this person who was an aspiring interior designer was actually the spouse of the president of this company. And Really? So, and it wasn't a, it wasn't like a professional thing. She was sort of trying to break into the world of interior design. And so she wanted us to shoot. Basically what she wanted was um, a portrait, an environmental portrait that she, that they could use for magazines and, and promotion and stuff like that. And, and so like, and we told them, we're like, no, like you, this is completely separate from the client job. Like this is, no, you have no right to be button in. So the day of the shoot, we get there and we're setting everything up. We we finish one location and we start breaking down and we start moving stuff into the second part. And this person comes up to me with like six different outfits and they're like, okay, so in between this job you just finished and then the next location, uh, let's do two environmental portraits here and then we can do two in the other room and then we'll do, and like, I'm just standing there and I'm just like, and it was exactly like you said, you just have to say, no. That's not going to happen. That's not part of this job. That's not part of the, the parameters of this job. 
and it's like the the most basic definition of scope creep that i had ever seen um and they got angry and they marched off and they went to the president of the company and the president of the company came out you know with their head down and they were like you know is there any way you can so at that point i was lucky because we had the creative the, the design company was there and the creative director was right there so i just turned to them and i'm just like what do you want to do like we can keep saying no and so they were like okay we're going to do the, the job we're supposed to do. And then if there's any time at the end of the job, we're going to create a separate line item. It's going to be a separate bill, you know, like you invoice an additional thing. So eventually we ended up doing it and it was an extra like 1200 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but it was crazy. It was just, it just, the, it was so crazy. It was just like, it was, it was one of those things where you're just like, we're all looking at each other. Like, is this actually happening? Like there's a temper tantrum going on mm -hmm. because somebody wanted something that nobody agreed to. Um, and it was carry, just a, uh, do you carry change of work orders? We carry like blank invoices and for, for the, luckily for the design, for the, cause they were in charge and they were calling the shots and everything. So I looked at them um, and they were like, it's just, it's, we'll just add it as a line item at the bottom. Um, they're like, you know, if we, at the end of the day, if we still have time, we'll do it, but we're not, we're not interrupting the flow of this job just so that this person can squeeze in stuff that they want well i carry um, I, I i i used to carry i probably still have been one in that bag over there a uh, little thing i had made up at kinko's mm -hmm. change of work order because every time i do a job i know exactly what i'm going in to do yep. that became even more rigorous after i became a web designer because if you want to talk about scope creep oh you, yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah yep. you know um and in old days these were html Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. <laughs> um, sorry about that. These were HTML pages. It wasn't easy to like move that over. It was like, oh geez, you know. Here comes the code. Uh, and I would pull this, pull it out, and say, absolutely, I can do that shot. Um, that's going to add an additional four fifty. Are you allowed? Are you the one that can sign it? And the idea of doing that extra shot just evaporated. Right. Nine yeah, times out of ten, they were like, nah, we're, we're good with what you're doing." Yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes it would make more money. Yeah. Um, abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they always have a contingency when, like when you're going to a gig, yeah, have something that, you know, be prepared. And if, if you're approached about extra stuff, just be willing to, you know, you got to stand up and be like, nope, that's, you know, that's, that's an additional cost. And it, it, it's, it's, if, as long as it doesn't interrupt with the parameters of this job today, you know, we can squeeze it in, but it, it can't take over the, the job at hand. Right. And then the problem is if you do it, you're not the nice, well, to the person that you did it for, you may be the nice guy that did it, but for like, for you, for the design company, you know, you're the guy that couldn't keep control. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was, there and was then all kinds that's of negativity a bad mark on you later on. Yep. Right. Yeah. There was all kinds of negativity and there were, you know, I can't believe that they weren't willing to work with us. And it's like, no, they, they we totally willing to work with you, but you can't, you just, you can't take over something that's already been approved and okayed and signed off. And yeah, you know, this is it. This, this is how it's going to work. And you've got someone that's like, that's just, throw my weight around. Yeah. That's just going to piss off the people that are actually paying you good money for what yeah. you're doing. And it's going to affect you later on. Yeah. You guys believe in karma? Mm, I'm gonna, sometimes. Yeah. Karma. No, not Carmen. Karma. <laughs> <laughs> we believe that karma. Oh, can fly. We all believe in Carmen. I believe in oh. Carmen. <laughs> um, this is, uh, this, this, this story uh, goes back quite a bit. Um, I want to say 86 or 87, I was in New York showing my book and I, what I would do is I'd go to New York and I'd go to the Eileen Ford agency or elite, uh, with my portfolio and try to get models to test with in New York. Because if I came back to Phoenix with a bunch of New York models in my book, that gave me cred. And it was not cheap to do, believe me. Um, so I, would, I was sitting there and this young man walked in and I thought, boy, I know this guy. I'm in New York City, right? And I'm like, eh. anyway, so he sits down. We start talking and I said, so you're a photographer? And he said, yeah. I said, where are you, where are you from? Phoenix. And I'm like, really? Because... <laughs> I think I know this story. I know I every too. photographer in Phoenix, but okay. Yeah. Well, let me, let me see your book. And he puts out, pulls out his book and I open the page and they're right on the front page is Richard Petrillo's beautiful photograph he did for diamonds. And here's Steve's shot that he did for, uh, 
of diamonds and there's gold waters in there. And I know who took those shots and it wasn't that guy. He worked in the lab. Oh. Oh. That's so was he, he was developing the shots. He worked in the it worked in the 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 okay. uh, one of the Phoenix labs, and so when something would come through that would look really good, he'd just make himself uh, one. Jesus, you know, and he I moved to New York. Too? And I um, I mean, I I had to bust him. I mean, I was nice about it, but I said, you know, I'm from Phoenix. My name's Don Gennetti. He's like, it just turns white <laughs> because I think he was sitting there going. I know that guy, but he's also going, what are the chances? Yeah. What are the chances? Right. Yeah. He'd been there a month and was uh, getting girls and, and shooting them. And his stuff just was terrible um, because you can't learn to be a photographer by, you know, stealing stuff out of the lab. Yeah. 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 You know, in, this... the 80s, in the eighties, they said that, that um, 60% of the photographers walking around New York City were carrying at least one picture they had not legitimately taken. That's crazy. That's uh, crazy. And it would have been a lot harder back then to, to find out. I oh mean, my God, yeah. If you, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, like who the would... If I hadn't sat down there, he could have kept going. Yeah. What were the chances? I mean, Richard never, never went back to New York. Steve never went back to New York. There were a few of us that did. We'd never know. Yeah. Now in the age of the internet, it's a little harder to do, yeah. uh, obviously. Still, I hear that in the wedding business, it seems to be, you know, the way things work, people ripping yep. off each other's wedding. Have you, have you heard of this, the photo stealers website? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy that there's that many people out there doing that kind of stuff. Like, Did she get sued? The website? Yeah. Photo I don't, I don't know. I know people threaten a lot of times, but usually there's, she's got so much mm -hmm. research documentation that's like, you know, and, no, these and, people are actually stealing images and using them on their and own. And by the way, if you think you can just sue somebody for intellectual property rights, be very careful because I bet none of you have an idea of what an IP attorney costs. Right. And they don't take jobs on spec. There's yeah. no such, what's it called? Uh, if if yeah. they win, they get paid. They don't do that. You're right out the gate at about $650 to $900 an hour. Yeah. for ip it's you know you can threaten to sue but you're probably not going to sue yeah, they know, yeah. especially if you're so lame that you stole pictures for your website <laughs> <laughs> chances yeah. are you got no money anyway yeah it's it's crazy who else has had a who else has had a terrible client stephanie you've had a terrible client no thank goodness not yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm just listening in uh in shock to some of it <laughs> but no, it's been pretty, pretty good. James, oh. James, has, James told us his story. Um, Carmen, you've had to have had run into a couple of uh, super interesting people, haven't you? Yeah, I don't remember. I know I have. Have you ever seen NCIS? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> you don't no, remember where you were last night. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i don't remember where i was last night <laughs> and i've been saying the wine should come to my house yeah <laughs> you go <laughs> how about you sophie had a, ever had a weird client or a situation not in photography well you're a therapist though right yeah. we don't even want it we don't have time yeah, we don't want to get into that <laughs> Actually, I'm very lucky. Uh, I, I I have very decent. I don't have a lot of weirdos, but I've had one. But I there's no way I would. I, I there's no way to share that. Well, uh, Sophie, right now in Florida, there's a woman who needs you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a weird situation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through. I'm gonna try. I don't want to try to. I'm, I'm gonna try not to name the person because this is a local person. Um, this was years and years ago. I was in my other studio and I, I was, I was just, I was in the studio and I was working one day and there was a knock on the door and this guy came in and he was like, Hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm local to the area and I'm thinking about getting in photography and I, I like your work and I just wanted to, you know, swing by and meet you. And I'm like, Oh, cool. Come in. So he comes in and he's, he starts pointing at all these examples on the wall 
and he's like so how did you do this one and how'd you do this one and how'd you do this one and it got to the oh, point where it was he a was caesar workshop was it <laughs> no no yeah he he so he but he it just got to the point where i had answered enough questions and i was like okay this is getting a little it's just you know he's sucking up a lot of time so he goes he's looking at the work on the wall and he goes you know he goes um I, I could, I could shoot, I could shoot these. I could do this. He's like, I should, I should open a studio. And I'm like, all right, that's like, motive, like inspiration is awesome. Like that's, you know, fantastic. Like, you know, let me know how that works out for you kind of thing, you know, and I'm trying to push him out the door. So a couple of months later, I pull into the, the parking lot and I'm getting out of the car and this guy is in the car next to me and he gets out and he's like, Hey, and I'm like, Oh, Hey, haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? And he was just like, well, I'm moving into your building. I just got a, a photography studio. He's like, I'm going to move into your building. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, what do you, what do you, you know, like, what are you going to do? And basically he was like, well, I'm going to shoot what you shoot. I'm going to do headshots and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. okay, this, all right, this is interesting. So he would, so he like, he follows me upstairs and I'm like, I'm at the top fourth floor and I'm like trying to get the door open and everything. And he's standing right behind me and I'm like, what, what's going on? And he was just like, oh, I just wanted to come in and see some of the things you were working on. And I'm like, this is a little awkward. Um, so, so then like over time, um, he started going to like local workshops and other people that I knew, other photographers in the area would go to these workshops and they would get out, they would afterwards, after the workshop was done, they would say, oh, I, I bumped into your buddy so-and-so. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they were like, oh, well, they, they told me that um, they moved into your building and that you were, you were helping them out and you were giving them tips on you know, how to, how to do this. And I'm like, that, no, we haven't, no, we haven't had any kind of conversations like that. Like, uh, you know, he just moved into the building and it, it started to get more and more, like more people were saying this, like, Oh, I heard that you were coaching this guy. And I heard, you know, like, and I'm like, where, what is going on? So then he started, he started emailing me and he would say, I have a model and I've booked a location in town. Um, and I have a bunch of lights, but I don't really know how to set them up. So I was wondering if you could come down and set up all my lights for me. And then I could, <laughs> I could do the session. And then at the end of the session, you could take your camera and you could get a couple of pictures, you know, for, for coming down and setting all the lights up and everything. And I'm like, That's great. like, no, I don't do that. I said, here, here's what it would cost for a private workshop. I'm like, I'm more than happy to charge you a day rate. I'll <clears> come <throat> with you. We'll, you know, you can, we'll set up all the lights. I'll show you what to do, but it's going to cost you. This is not, he's like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I, I, I was hoping that you could come and set everything up for me and then I could do the session. And then at the end, I'm like, no, here, here's what it would cost for, <laughs> for a day rate. Um, so things are starting to get really weird and he's, he's right in my building. And then, um, then another photographer sends me an email and he said, uh, look at this screenshot. He's like, and, and what, what looks interesting and everything. And it was, it was word for word, um, all the verbiage from my pricing page only the prices had been just chopped in half, 50%. And I knew it was from my page because there were some spelling errors that I missed that were in this thing. And it was the same, it was the same thing. It was the same, exactly the same thing. And I'm like, Lord. okay, that's that's really awkward. Like if you're gonna do that, like why would you do it from somebody that's literally in this, like two floors down? And like, can't spell. You... And right, exactly. Like, go after no, somebody that can spell can't a little spell. bit I mean, better. Right? Come on. <laughs> Um, so, and it, it just, it just kept escalating and I got more and more awkward and I'm like, I'm really uncomfortable with this, about this. So I, one of the things that I did was he was a member of the local PPA kind of thing. And so I just sent them an email and I was just like, I've never had this kind of situation happen before. I'm not a member, but there's a lot of weird stuff. And, and I only, I, like I showed the screenshots, um, but I couldn't, you know, like I couldn't mention the fact that he was mentioning him you know his my name to people because there was no solid like sure proof to that kind of thing and they wrote back and they were like well basically he's a member and you're not a member so you know like we'll tell him to you know and people have a tendency to write very similar to one another or something i don't even remember what the excuse was sure. um and then ultimately what happened was he started sharing that space with two other people and he was sort of, he was the tenant and they were the subtenants and he was collecting the rent, but he wasn't actually paying his rent. So after about six months, the landlord was just like, you know, like you haven't paid anything since you moved in here, like get out. Um, but that gave him an excuse. He was going around telling everybody that, you know, like I was jealous and that I had him thrown out of the building 
because I didn't like competition. And I'm like, I've had like six words with this guy. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. It was so crazy. So that so like the, the moral of the story and he, and it turns out like he, he partnered with the, with a really good um, post-production person and, you know, it like he seems to be doing really well, but I, it just, it felt really weird. Like that's not the way to put your foot in the door by, by doing that, you know, like it, so you are kind of like the Michael Douglas guy and he was kind of like Sharon Stone. It was like he the fatal attraction for photographers. Ugly, right. Yes. Right. Okay. I'm going to go in and there's like, they're going to boil the Canon camera. It's just, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's weird. And it's like, I feel even funny talking about it. Cause it's like, I'm, that's not my job to, to like badmouth people but there's just awkward situations and it's like how do you it's like what do you do like how do you handle something like that and i thought i did it as best as i could like i didn't want to be a jerk but i was just like you know i don't i don't know you and i i'm not comfortable with you telling people that i'm helping you out because i'm not like it's just awkward it was just a weird weird thing every once in a while it's just weird it's just weird so that was my weird, that was a, that was a weird photography related thing. Like inspiration is awesome. And I bend over backwards to help people mm -hmm. if you're, if you're genuine and, you know, but just the level, it just, it just got so awkward. And I was just like, I, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, in, that's run. really interesting. You run next time you meet somebody like this, you run. Yeah. 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 This, the signs I can pick up on the signs a little bit now, but let, let me tell you. Just, run in the other direction <laughs> let me tell you something i'm absolutely serious about this it took me a long time to learn it but it has never failed me since i learned it and that is go with your gut if it doesn't seem right if it just seems they're a little over the top you have there's nothing wrong with going with going saying i'm just not comfortable with this yep. and moving on I wanted to say hi to Dennis Dunbar. Dennis, are you uh, online? You got a you got a microphone, or are you just sort of? Oh, I'm I'm listening in. You're listening in. Uh, yeah, I don't have the camera hooked up right now. Uh, that's just fine. Uh, Dennis is a, um, a bail bondsman in the <laughs> L.A. No, <laughs> he's not really a bail bond. He's a uh, very good, uh, highly sought after retoucher. Uh, we're talking about clients from hell or goofy things that happened i know you got a story oh I, I i have a recent story but i was listening in and people talking about putting images on their website that's not theirs i haven't shot a single image on my website <laughs> <I'll confess laughs> well, <that well. laughs> yeah but, but you, uh, yeah you I, do I, tend to give I, them credit so yeah yeah that, that, that's always the problem with being the retoucher like they want, you know, you get, I get asked to enter contest or put stuff in a source book or whatever, but like, there's no way for me to say, I didn't shoot this. I did the retouching on it. So I, I can't enter them. Yeah. Uh, but, but horror, horror stories for, uh, for clients. I had a recent thing, a photographer friend who, who I've known for many, many years, he shot some um, up and coming singer lady and did a headshot and she wanted some retouch or whatever. So he connected us. If she was asking for all these kinds of uh, uh, examples, like before afters and stuff like, you know, this is a lot more qualification you're asking than just retouching a simple headshot. You can look at my website and see a whole ton of examples where I've done, you know, good work. So I didn't get, she didn't ask me to do that. But a few weeks later, she asked me to uh, work on something for a uh, album cover. And it had to be done, turned around in a day. And I figured she doesn't have much money. So I gave her a break. We negotiated a set number of uh, revisions, you know, uh, for that thing. And um, she sent me the file. And this image is a not very focused shot of her standing in a field in the evening. And it's three stops underexposed and shot at a very high ISO. And her main complaint is it's too grainy. And can you do something magical with this? I just want to see what your magic is. Like alarm bells are starting to go off for this thing. So I, I open it up like three stops, reduce the grain down, and then you know take a look, do some dodging and burning. Like, okay, let's do some cool color grading on this, whatever. We go a few rounds. Her boyfriend is uh, give me the feedback because he's the intermediate because she's in a recording session or something in meetings or something that day. So um, 
it goes around and around and around. And she doesn't like anything I'm doing. Finally, they say, well, here's the shot from the photographer. We really, really like this. It's just too grainy. And they sent me a, uh, it's about a 70 megabyte um, file. Uh, it's a square crop of, of her shot. So there's a lot of room around it and stuff like that. And she wanted square images anyway for, uh, for this album cover thing. So like, okay, how about I just reduce the grain on this? Great idea. So I reduce the grain on it, get that done. And then the guy comes back. Now we need you to do six different crops. We hadn't talked about that in the budget. Finally agrees to like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll pay you extra and, and no more revisions. So I do that. They say, great, thanks. The next morning she says, oh, I need the entire shot for this. I don't just need the crop version. And I explained to her, like, well, you didn't like any of the stuff I did. You didn't like any of the magic I came up with. <laughs> so, so of, of course, you know, like, we wind up going, I was told, just reduce the grain on the shot of the photography. And then she starts going on about, well, no professional would ever start with a poor quality original thing or whatever like this. And like, like oh, Lord, you know, I, your photographer didn't know what they're doing. It's not focused. It's three stops underexposed and shot at ISO, ISO. It's worst case scenario for making an image look good. They're like, well, I just need you to start from the raw file and, and make it look like this and, and get it perfect. And like, no, we've already done that work. You've already paid for this stuff. So then she just starts to ghost me and I know I'm not gonna get paid this small amount of money, <laughs> but you know, it's just like two days of my life. They're like, man, this is why I just start asking for deposits from, from customers like that. I was just going to say there are two types of clients that I will not work with until it's paid for up front. One is politicians. Um, I don't know about Europe or anywhere else, but in the, in the United States, if you do work for a Senate campaign person, a guy running for Senate, and he stiffs you, you have absolutely no recourse. Yeah. Oh, wow. Zero nothing there's nothing you can do um and and celebrities because uh they're all just nuts and uh, <laughs> you know driving photographers crazy retouchers crazy just part of their lives now i mean it's just really really uh, insane i remember watching a wonderful uh pbs story about the art director and photographer duo who did so many album covers back in the 70s uh, and uh, uh, you remember Morrison Hotel? Was yeah, the, yeah, yeah. H Henry Henry Dilts. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, I, he, yeah, great guy. Yeah, and he, the, the, he they tell the story on, and I can't find this. I can't find it on YouTube or anywhere. It's it's lost, and it's just too bad. Um, but that's Morrison standing behind the window of the actual Morrison Hotel. It was a hotel downtown. Uh, LA. So the way it went was is Gilson, right? Gilson? Diltz. D I L T Z. G yeah. Henry Diltz. Yep. Henry Henry and the art director pick up the 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 doors or yeah, Jim Morrison, yeah. They pick up the yeah. doors. That's the one. And and in their van. And they go driving around LA to look for pictures for the cover of the Morrison Hotel album. Now, can you imagine today going to pick up J-Lo in your van to go drive around to look? For no, my God, there would be days. There would be, a you know, two Winnebago's with, uh, you know, come on, come on in, Rich. Uh, two Winnebago's, there would be, you know, 40 people running around. But that's what they did in those days. They literally drove around L.A. Um, uh, the... Uh, to that album, uh, something Nash and Young. What was it, Nash and oh, Young? Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Oh, it's a great story. The, the Morrison Motel is a great story. They went in and asked if they could shoot in the shoot in the lobby, and the, the bellman said no. So they sat in the car and waited for the bellman to get in the elevator. Everybody <laughs> ran in and shot one roll of film. Yep. So, <laughs> so Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young they're in the van, they're driving around, they see this old building, this old house with a porch on the front. You've Everybody who's over 40 knows that album. Oh, yeah. And they're all sitting there, right? Go back, they process the film, 
except that if you look at the album, it's not Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. It's like Crosby, Nash, Stills and whatever. They're out of order. So the record company says, well, shit, we've decided to call them Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Go back and get the shot, right? So they all pile in the van, go back to that corner in, uh, in Van Nuys, and uh, the house has been torn down and it's a mini mart. <laughs> so that's why when you open up the album cover, they're not in the name order. They're in the, in the original order that they were shot in the, on the thing. Yeah, that's well, just amazing stuff. You would in, in the late 80s, I worked at one of the rental houses in LA, a uh, photo rental service. It was like one of the biggest photo rental houses in the country. Maybe, maybe the biggest. Yeah, and, and Henry Diltz was one of the customers who would come in. And I knew he was a singer. I didn't realize he was that guy until like a couple decades later. I'm like, I was friends with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dang. Oh, and he, he and that art director did so many jo the shots. The Eagles cover, the, 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 the Eagles, the big double album cover. In fact, it was Henry and the art director that came up with the idea for the double album covers. Nobody was doing that before those two guys started doing it. <laughs> but the Eagles, um, they're there. Joni Mitchell decided she'd just go out with them, have breakfast. So they all meet at Joni's house. She makes them breakfast. They get in the, get in the cars and drive out to the Mojave Desert to do that shot. Today, the Eagles would be each chauffeured yeah. by their own driver. You know, um, yep. they'd be Winnebago's and stuff. It's just a different world. It was so fabulous back then. But today, again, if it's a celebrity and they don't pay you, you don't have enough money to pursue it. You just don't. So... If it's a celebrity or a politician, get paid up front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like if I work with a commercial photographer on any kind of regular job, I know asking for deposits up front and stuff, I, it isn't necessary and it would be an impediment to the working relationship. You know, if, if a photographer says, I got this job for you and I sent him, here's a contract for you to sign, like, nope, nope, bye-bye. But regular off-the-street people, if you don't have that, you're going to get screwed. And they have small budgets and outsized expectations of what can be done. Yes, they do. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Dennis, that attitude from ad agencies is what made, what made me go into the ad business on my own. Um, I stopped being a bank for those people. Um, when they would say, well, we don't do contracts. You know, they have a contract with the Mr. Coffee guy. Mm -hmm. The people who come and water the plants every week, they have a contract, and yet they wouldn't give us photographers yeah. a contract. No, that's what yeah. I just stopped doing. I just stopped doing it, and and eventually, uh, I guess revenge is sweet because uh, in in uh, two thousand, I I owned the uh, third largest ad agency in Phoenix, so I I gambled and won. Mm -hmm. Except I had a partner gambled and lost there <laughs> oh <laughs> terrible idiot uh who else gotta have some some stories out there gene you got anything from your shoots i actually i do and this is why you don't do weddings i remember when i started i told my husband i said you know i'm gonna do latino weddings because there's nothing here that takes care of the Latino and I'm gonna be the one. So <clears throat> I have a wedding, lovely couple, and I set up the date and I said, well, it's just, you know, it's just gonna be about three hours maybe. And I said, okay, that's good. So they said, but I, I, I want you to shoot, shoot me when I'm getting dressed. And I said, that's fine, no problem. I said, do you have your, you're gonna be all set up when I arrive, yes? And I said, yes, I'm gonna be fine. So we arrive, I arrive on, on the house and she's not ready. And I said, where is your makeup artist? You know, where is your makeup? He said, well, she didn't show up. I'm like, okay, well, I said, what, you gonna get ready? They said, well, I don't know how. And I'm like, at least she was, you know, her hair was due. And I said, what do you mean you don't know? They said, no, I don't. I said, by the way, do you have any makeup? I'm like, you don't have any makeup. It's no. Do you have some? I said, can you do my makeup real quick? And I said, well, she looked like totally pale and horrible. I said, sure. So I had to put everything away and do her makeup. And then 
muy en eso que les les photograph you, we photograph her, she's getting dressed, that's fine. Then, and I said, okay, you know, I, I really have to go to the wedding, so I need to prepare for, for the church and the lights and everything. And she said like, oh, I said, you know what? Um, they, they phone and she doesn't have a car to go to her wedding. Something happened to the car, the person that was going to pick her up called her oh. and I said, there's no car. Sounds like a model <laughs> mayhem like, shoot right there, um, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and, and she goes like, um, I don't have transportation to my wedding. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have transportation to the wedding? Is it? Something happened to the car. I mean, it was tragic after tragic. I'm like, okay. And she says, can you take me to my wedding? And I said, sure. You know, we got the money. But then she says, but we have to decorate the car. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so they had to take all the ribbons that they have in her car that didn't work. Something happened to the car. <clears throat> they put it on my on my car and we drove her to the wedding. It was the most bizarre thing I ever encountered. Like, can you do my makeup? Can you do this? And oh, can you take me to my wedding? We became the chauffeur, the makeup artist, the photographer. And it was Hilarious. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then she she did have a little kid in the house <laughs> that decided to go to the kitchen and get the papikra, papikra powder on the floor. And then she in her wedding dress, white, was going to pick up the boy and the papikra in the kitchen. And like it was small much and like, no, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Leave the kid alone. It was hilarious. There was so, a, and I said, you know what? This is not what we're supposed to do. Not for you, doing. no. <laughs> I, I, I did a wedding for a friend of a friend, and the bride's mother was one of those real abusive drunks. You know, when she was dry, she was mean to everybody. Oh. And she kept getting drunker and drunker. And they had um, sushi delivered. And in her drunken state, she must have confused the wasabi with guacamole. Oh dear. So she took a a little chip thing, stuck it in, got about a you know, giant thing of wasabi, and they're screaming, no, ah! she just puts it in her mouth and chews it and swallows it. Oh, she burns and then she herself. She stands there and and she starts shrieking. Like something out of a horror movie. It was like, I was like, like, oh my God, she's going to die on this girl's <laughs> wedding day right here. Uh, they had to, we had to have uh, paramedics come uh, and, and uh, literally give, they, they put her on the stretcher because she was in so much pain. They knocked her out. They, they put her under because she couldn't stop screaming. Um, <laughs> I guess that goes back to that karma thing. I'm just... <laughs> Yeah, you think? <laughs> Anybody think else karma? have something? Or? No, I think I think with karma, it's like if you're lucky enough, the universe lets you watch. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It it'll it'll come. <laughs> you know, the more good the the more good things you do for anybody else, the more good things will happen to you if you don't expect that to be the case. It's when you think, okay, I'm gonna do something nice for this person and by God, now they'll owe me. Um, yeah. and that's, that's not how it works. We should just- yeah, it's the wrong way. Just be as, uh, uh, the best thing in the whole world is to be of service to somebody. The best thing in the whole world is when someone says, thank you, you helped me get that done. Whether it's, you know, moving a refrigerator into the other room or, or or what have you. And it's with that in mind that I remind you that I'm remodeling my living room. <laughs> my, if, you could, if you could jump on a plane, come here, pizza's on me. It, it'd be really, really nice. Think of all the karma you'd build up. Uh, no, never mind. Can't do that, Don. We're shelter in place in Illinois. It's official. Oh. Oh my, well, I, uh, 
good God Almighty. I hope they know what they're doing. That's all. Uh, that's. I talked. I talked to two guys from the UK yesterday. Thank you, Dennis. By the way, those guys are great. Those guys are. Oh, great. oh, you 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 did the podcast with them? Yeah, the two and a half, two, two hour and twenty minute podcast. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah J- J- Jake, and, is, Jake and Wayne are great. Yeah, really, really, really great guys. Funny as hell. Um, and uh, we we had a great time, but but they were talking about it and they they kind of agreed with my assessment is I think this whole thing would be better. This whole COVID thing would be better if we had somebody to trust. Oh yeah, anybody that we could actually say, I trust you. Right wing, mid wing, left wing. We're just there's there's just not any truth out there at all these days. Um. But let's yeah, we let's, need to get uh, the politics out of it and just focus on facts and. But everything is political now. Yeah, that's... everything. Anne Hathaway. I, do you all know who Anne Hathaway is? Yep. Actress? She just apologized because she played a part in a movie yeah. where she's a witch with only three fingers. She just apologized to all the people who have less than five digits for offending them while she yep. played this part in a movie. Now, I don't know what's happened to human beings, but I remember with just a few years ago, there was this big stink because they were going to make uh, Idris Alba 007. Now, yeah. Idris, Idris Alba is like one of the best actors on the planet. Make, you know, if you, if it's Idris Alba, uh, was playing uh, Spider-Man, I might actually watch a, a Spider-Man movie because he's that good. But there was this, oh no, you know, he's black. He's, he's only supposed to play black characters and Bond is white and all this stuff. Uh, and, and the argument coming back, which was the right argument, was it's a fictitious role. Yeah. It's just a part. And in well, four least, short exactly years, British. we have now flipped it to I guess the only people who could play that witch are actresses with actual three fingers. Where did sanity go? It's a part in a, not only that, it's a part in a fantasy movie about a witch, not a real person, <laughs> a witch. I'm, I'm, I'm frightened. <laughs> it's like if we've all moved to Florida. Sorry, James. I'm I'm sorry, but it's just like you know, <laughs> yeah. the entire on, universe man. has moved to Florida. Oh my God! Anyway, wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful show. Thank you guys for coming and bringing your stories. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Thank you, uh, Carmen and uh, Sophie. Have you shot your your lady this week, Carmen? Or are you is the lockdown really keeping that at bay? No, we're keeping it at bay. But she did call me today. Mm-hmm. of all things because i had been thinking about her and she was just hey i'm just checking up on see how you're doing and nice. uh, i thought that was really nice so you can hear the rumble and that's then the, she... the, sounds like somebody was trying to get out of a casket we're, we're remodeling the bathroom as well and they're taking out the <laughs> steel uh, uh bathtub it's loud yeah yeah we're on lockdown but carmen tell them what you did at lunchtime Oh yeah, it was a friend's birthday, so we were we have a like you know a little center little center square here, and we were just drinking champagne at at noon on lockdown. Um, in lockdown, <laughs> we were we were outside with our masks and with our special paper in case we got controlled by the police. <laughs> but we were keeping a social distance. We had a you, proper social distance. You can distance be out. And... You can be outside one hour a day, right? Yes. Yes. So that was so your this, hour. This was this was the hour. Yeah. Just like prison. With, so yeah. you get 23 hours indoors and the one hour outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. But you can go shopping. In- you have to call the cops, boss. Yeah, boss. We're moving on, boss. <laughs> where, where are you that has that restriction? Oh, we're in the uh, we're in the south of France. Oh, okay. Yeah, France, oh, all of France got we got put in a second lockdown. But it's not as strict as the first one. But this idea is you have to, we have to carry a piece of paper called an attestation. And there's, there's like six reasons on there that you're allowed to go out and you have to check it off. You have to sign it, date it and put the hour that you have 
that one of the reasons is leaving. drinking champagne. Um, yeah. Is, <laughs> no, no, they didn't have that one. <laughs> that's on your other. <laughs> it's France. I would have believed you if you said it's, yes. That's yeah, one of the reasons. It's so. exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> it's France. What? Yeah. Of course. There's one for brie, and there's one for bread, and there's one for drinking, and then there's one. For... <laughs> no, but it was it was kind of kind of nice because police did go by, and we were like, "Quick, put our masks on," you know. And but they just they just went right <laughs> on. I was like, well, well, we'll just keep on drinking. You know? I don't know. Well, I I hate I hate to be you know. Donnie Downer, but didn't Europe experiment with having people carry papers around once before? I don't think it turned out so well. <clears throat> yeah. There's a different papers on you, Carmen. Huh? <laughs> Is that with the little star? Oh yeah, I had to. They had to carry papers. They had to have a star on, and uh, you know, couldn't be yeah. caught out. And they had uh, hours that they could be outside as well. So yeah, there's a I just there's a I just hate to think that there's some politician somewhere going, hey, I remember we did this. How did that work? Let's try that again. No, don't do that. Try something oh, this, else. This, this, the scary yeah, thing they're, is they're really a whole... like, they're they're very low key about it this time. I we're not seeing that first time you would see them stopping people and you'd have to show your ID and, and the paper. Yeah. I, I think I've seen it once since we've been in, in lockdown. They're I think way... Spain, Spain is on lockdown too, right? Spain? Yeah, and Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. And Italy. And Italy. And Germany. Italy, it, yeah. And Illinois. And Illinois. <laughs> 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 well, there's, a, there's an old the saying. There's yeah. an old saying, as Dresden goes, so does Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so... Uh, we, we, we will, we'll all get through this, but the, the thing that I would say that, that is upsetting to me, and I've said it once before, I don't like the fact that they're trying to make the abnormal normal. We should accept that it's abnormal, wear the masks all we want, but now when I look around and I see, you know, $40 million companies making masks, I can tell you that when it comes time to like not wear masks, you're going to have a whole bunch of lobbyists throwing money around to keep us wearing masks. Um, there's, it's, it's not, it's, it, we should all join in, work real hard. If the masks work, we can get rid of it. Awesome. But then after that, we put the masks away. And maybe, or maybe we don't, maybe we wear them when we go to the theater. Maybe we wear them when we go to, to the store or whatever. But it's not normal, and I don't think we need to be led to the thing where I'm seeing fashion shooters, Jim. I don't know if you're guilty of this. I'm seeing fashion shooters doing fashion editorials with girls in masks outside, not around other people. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I covered right. swim week in Miami, and that was kind of surreal, the whole thing. They, they did have some girls on the runway with masks on, not all the girls. Um, and of course, everybody in the press had to have a mask on. But well, if the girls are going back, see, I've, been, I've been backstage at a, at a runway show. So if, you know, if they're walking backstage like it's a usual backstage, then yeah, they, they needed to have masks on because it's mass chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, everybody's right on top of each other. So that, that, that would make sense. Um, but, in, you know, an editorial girls hiking mm. in the woods, you know, it's like, you know, come on. But yeah, I, I don't want to see that in Vogue or W or any of the other ones. Anything but hiking, hiking USA. Or, I'm sorry, hiking Florida, because it's, you know, it's just a Florida thing. To do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jim, uh, don't go on any spiritual sabbaticals, steal cop cars and stuff this week, and uh, we won't read about you in next week's uh, <laughs> photo man friday uh, florida man friday everybody thank you for so much for coming out thanks sid appreciate have it nice have a safe week you guys stay, you. stay everybody stay safe so we're all back here next week take care now all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye everyone. good chat